Hi, this is Dr. Rhonda Felheim. We're going to be taking a look uh, now at humoral immunity, which is the second type of adaptive immunity. The other one that we talked about was cell-mediated immunity. This is humoral immunity. All right. So humoral immunity, uh, first thing I like to do is sort of look at the word humoral and uh, make sure that we're all on the same page with that. If I were to just ask everybody, oh, what does humoral mean? Well, not most of us don't know, so I'm not going to proceed as if, you know, I assume that you all do. So humoral often means fluid, okay, or blood. So we're talking about the fluid and blood when we say humoral immunity. Humoral immunity is, we're now going to engage the B lymphocytes. Okay, so the B lymphocytes are very much a part of humoral immunity. And uh, so we're going to see them in action now as well. So extracellular pathogens are their target, meaning um, antigens that do not inhabit the cell or haven't made it to the cell yet. You know, they're in the fluids. Okay, so um, this is primarily going to be bacteria or toxins of some sort um, that have entered the blood or fluids of the body. So um, uh, it, it's kind of interesting that um, humoral immunity is going to employ a whole different means of getting at these pathogens. In humoral immunity, the, the tool that's used are antibodies. This is a picture of an antibody. All right. So the B lymphocytes don't just go out and kill the cell like cell-mediated immunity did. Um, we're, they're going to use, or we're going to use, <laughs> when we talk about humoral immunity, we're going to use um, these uh, antibodies. So let's look at the, what an antibody structure looks like. All right. We have our long chain, or our heavy chain is the long one, short chain is the light one. And you'll notice at the end of both of those, where they come together, there's a very specific binding site for the antigen. All right. In other words, the, anti the antibodies that are specific to the different antigens will have different shapes here. And so only a specific antigen that fits that shape is going to be able to bind to these specific antibodies. You'll also see on these antibodies these complement binding sites. And I know that you're wondering if complement, the word complement, is talking about those same proteins that we talked about in nonspecific resistance. And the answer is yes. Yes. Uh, co these complement proteins actually have a site that they bind to on the antibody. All right? Because these are nonspecific. They're going to want, you know, they're going to set off the processes and uh, go after those um, substances no matter who they are. So we're bringing them along to fortify our response because, you know, the antibodies are going to be very specific. This is adaptive immunity. But we're now incorporating some of that nonspecific into the picture by bringing our complement proteins right along with us. Okay. Now, when we talk about antibodies, we have a number of categories and um, different functions that they tend to serve. And so for your guided learning questions, you will need to use your text or a reference source to list the categories and the primary functions of the antibodies in those categories. Okay, I'm not going to go into that in detail here. So what do antibodies do? Well, they serve as receptor site on the B cell membrane. All right, the B lymphocyte cell membrane, the receptor sites, huh, receptor sites for B cell, on the B cell membranes. Well, does that mean that the B lymphocyte then will have antigens binding to these, to these, um, antibodies that serve as receptors? And the answer is yes. And they will be very specific antigens that are drawn to specific B lymphocytes. See how we're using that word specific? Okay, what else do antibodies do? Well, they do this process called neutralization, which um, really sort of just keeps uh, the antigen from doing whatever it does. 
Okay, and I'll show you a picture of that in just a second. So it just sort of keeps it from being active. Immobilizing antibodies just kind of stop these substances, these antigens, in their track. Agglutinate and precipitate. Agglutinate means to clump, and so antibodies can clump antigens that are actually on cell membranes. And precipitate. What that means is that antibodies will be capable of um, of uh, actually pulling antigens out of solution if they are actually soluble in the fluids or blood. And then again, they do um, attach or fix the complement proteins and uh, and activate that process to help. I hope you remember this picture from when we talked about complement proteins and the nonspecific. Uh, so here's what we're looking at now. We have an antigen-antibody complex. Okay, Antigens have bound to the antibodies. So what happens from at this point? Well, as I said, they're capable of neutralizing antibodies. And see how they just block this off? Agglutinating. All right, They're able to interconnect with antigens that are present on cell membranes and cause them to clump. All right. And precipitation, here these antigens happen to be soluble in fluid and by you know interconnecting the antibodies can actually pull them out of solution. Now you'll notice that the antibodies are not killing. They're not, there's no killing here. Um, however, think about this. These, these, you know, if they're immobilized and there's a number of antibodies around them pulling them out of solution or pulling them to a screeching halt or causing them to clump, they are now far better targets, far easier targets for the macrophages and other phagocytes and natural killer cells to come in and just take them out. Okay? So, um, again, what these antibodies are doing is making these uh, antigens easier targets, easier targets for our phagocytes. All right? And didn't we say that that's very similar to what complement proteins did? Yes. Well, so now, though, we're going to couple these activities of the antibody with the activities of the complement proteins that are attached to antibodies. And as we can see, we've got, you know, they, again, they make them good targets. Uh, they enhance phagocytosis and inflammation. Now, now look what we're bringing to the picture. Oh, complement proteins do lyse cells, don't they? Yes, they do. Even though that's a nonspecific response, since these complements are piggybacking on antibodies, we are going to get some cell death. Ah. And we'll, but we'll get it from the complement proteins, not from the antibodies. Okay, I do encourage you at this point to go ahead and watch the videos that are provided um, about humoral immunity and then the last one about specific immunity uh, that sort of pulls everything together. Um, and again, those are posted for you.